Last time on Real Garage, we had bar time. This week, we're getting tanked. Today I'm going to make a custom aluminum dry sump engine oil tank that's going to fit where the side air box was before I cut them out on Season 3, Episode 6. Now this is pretty much dead space, but it's the perfect spot to hide a large oil tank. The first thing I did before taking the fender off was make some templates for this odd shaped tank. I thought about using a taller round tank, but that's just not gonna give me the capacity that I need. But this custom tank, that should easily give me 10 quarts. Next is transfer these templates to my material. For the outside of this tank, I plan on using four pieces. 090 thick, 5052 for the sides, and 316 6061 for the top. So I plan on bending one side in the back. With 5052 aluminum, it's important to keep in mind the grain structure when bending, and that's going to determine how you place your template on your material. 5052 can experience stress cracking when bending. Here's a real scoop on how to determine grain direction and some bend examples. Okay, so this is my bend line. Now I want to make sure that my grain direction is running against that bend line. If I make my bend with the grain, the grain boundaries are the weakest at that point and you could experience that stress cracking we talked about. However, bending against the grain is going to give you the strongest bend. So if we take a look at this, the easiest way to determine that is to hold your piece up against some light and you should be able to see the grain direction as this sheet is being rolled and formed. So right now I can tell that this grain is going this way and that would be against my bend line. Let's cut these out. I'm bending this to 90 degrees. The pocket this will fit into is not square to the body. I'll be squaring my sides on the tank to make it easier to build, which means it probably won't mount perfectly straight in the car. This isn't a problem since it will be behind a crush panel or a wheel well anyway. Warning, read and follow all labels and your owner's manuals. I clamp my two sides together closer to the top edge. This ensures the side that needs welding won't ride up on the radius band, which would make it higher than it really is. Now I can run a finished grind on both edges to make sure they match. All right, it's time to figure out my curved side measurements, which consists of this whole side and the bottom. So my side plate is gonna overlap these two sides by about halfway, so I've got this thing kind of fixtured into place. And it looks like the width of this is gonna be eight and 19 30 seconds. And for the top long measurement, Helps if you have a nice, narrow, thin tape measure for this. Looks like right at 20. That's some tough stuff. Before welding all these sides together, I'm gonna drill all the holes for the weld-on fittings. I'm gonna be using number 12 fittings for all the oil lines and number 10 for venting to the breather tanks. Now these number 12 fittings I got have a 0.787 step shoulder for centering them in the hole. 0.787 is 20 millimeter. So 
so you can probably guess where these came from. Now if you're using a standard 3 quarter inch hole saw, it'll probably wobble the hole out bigger anyway. But I'm using these precision carbide cutters. They're way more precise and they give me a cleaner cut, which could reduce contamination from a standard steel hole saw. So I'll be turning these down in my lathe to 0.750. Okay, I've got my holes drilled and deburred. Now it's baffle time. The baffles play an important role inside the tank. They de-aerate the oil and provide slosh control, which is important, especially under hard cornering and breaking, because you don't want that oil to push up into the vent lines. I'm making a set of four baffle chambers. One set near the top to help block oil from getting into the vent hoses and three for de-aerating and slosh control, which will have a variety of hole sizes. Starting from the bottom up, the first and second chambers will have a center baffle with a top plate. The third will be a perforated plate with a butt ton of smaller holes. Time to exercise the Rotex. Basically I'm just rolling these back flat after I punched all these holes. So now that I got all my baffles cut and punched, it's time for me to weld on my fittings. And I like to do this now because, especially with the fittings with the countersunk shoulder on them, I like to be able to weld them from the back side and the front side. So I've got my number 12 fittings for my return lines and my oil out. And I also have one more well done bung that I'm going to put in here. And that is a half inch NPT bung. And it's going right there. The purpose for that bung is because one of my favorite pet peeves about most oil tanks is that you can't tell how much oil is in it. So what I like to do is buy these high temperature stainless steel sight glasses. And this is going to be how I check the oil in my tank. Here's a quick little homemade tool for you. I use this to uh, basically clamp these fittings into place. So it's basically just a quarter inch bolt with a washer slipped on top of it and a smaller washer welded to the end. So it's basically just a little clamp. And then I took a piece of steel that I cut to the eighth inch thick and I cut it to just a little bit wider than the quarter inch bolt. So that will help hold this in place. And what I like about it is this little strip of metal is thin enough that it allows me to tack the inside or obviously the outside.
So for welding these on the back side, I set my Multimatic 220 AC-DC manually for 165 amps, 73 on balance, and 120 on frequency. Then I felt I needed a little tighter arc, so I bumped up the frequency to 140. For welding the top side of the fittings, I turned my amperage up to 175, although I really could have used 180 or a little more at the start. I also set my balance up to 75 to reduce the cleaning zone on the fillet weld, and I widened the arc puddle by setting the frequency down to 110. For both the bottom and the top welds, I used ER4943 filler metal. The 4943 is a better filler metal for high temperature applications. I used 1 16th filler for the back side and 332 for the top side. Okay, this is where I'm at. I basically welded the bottom parts for the bottom two chambers together. And I've wire brushed and cleaned my weld areas on the inside of the tank. Also, I took the opportunity to start clamping this thing down tight so it doesn't warp when you're welding on it. I clamped it down to the table, and I also clamped an angle piece on the long side and another piece vertically here. Aluminum does warp if you get it hot enough. And this doesn't have to be welded solid. I'm just putting down a few stitch welds here. Okay, I got all my baffles in. Now I can start welding the other side of the tank on. Okay, I know this looks pretty obnoxious, but I needed to get creative with the fixturing before I tacked the side panel in place. I don't want to completely overlap the sides before I weld them. For welding the side panel, I lowered my balance to 72 to make sure I had enough oxide cleaning since the two base metals are falling away from my tungsten. I also lowered my frequency to 100 to widen the arc puddle. Okay, sides all welded on, baffles are all in place. Now it's time to make the piece that will cover this end and the bottom. So I got my side all formed up, ready to go. But first, I got a few more weld-in parts. I've got these bosses that are threaded so that I can mount the tank in the car. And I've got a fitting for my drain plug I gotta weld in. Because I saw on some of the other welds there was a little bit of peppering in the weld. And that peppering usually is an indication that there's some oxide still getting drawn into the weld. So I lowered my balance down to 70.
For the top, I'm using 3 16 6061 aluminum. On this tank, I probably could have used the same material as the sides, but I normally make a top with a bolt-on cover to remove the baffles for cleaning. On this smaller tank, I decided to just use a couple of inline filters on the oil return lines. I'm machining a step on the sides of the top cover so it'll sit down into the tank. It'll also give me a better weld point. That is yummy. Fits perfect. Now let's just cut some holes for my breather fittings and my fill tubes. Welding the top on is a little tricky. The top plate is 3 16 and the sides are 090. I'll be concentrating the arc on the thicker top plate first and then rolling it to the thinner material. I'll be watching my puddle to make sure the thinner material doesn't start melting too soon. If it does, I'll direct the heat back towards the thicker metal. This is where you can see that thick top plate. I've really got my torch pointed more towards that thicker top plate. Because this thinner piece is melting quite a bit easier, which it's already hot because I've been welding on it, so that's making my problem worse. All right, now let's just make the bottom mounts for the car so that I can bolt this thing in place. Well, we're done. Well, for the most part. I still gotta make the top mounts for the tank, and I'll do that once I figure out where I'm gonna run my vent hoses. Stay tuned for season five of Real Garage, where we take this party inside. <laughs>